So here's an example, and this is the first time you're seeing Frog, which is um, the platform that we're developing. And you don't have to read all this, I'll show you a little demonstration. The idea is, what if we wanted our students to talk about the influence of Uber on city, city development, right? It's a very complex issue. What should cities do about Uber and, like, and similar companies, or Airbnb? Um, so we give them four roles, right? Jigsaw script, you're the mayor, you're a taxi driver, you're a, a customer, and you are a, a, a Uber driver. And we give you four different articles to read from different viewpoints. And then we put you together, first in expert groups, all the mayors from the different groups, you know, say what should mayors do, what have mayors done in different cities. And all the taxi drivers, ah, this is how we can fight them. But then you mix the groups. So this is what it could look like. Um, you have here three students and a teacher. The teacher goes into the management interface, he configures the graph, adds some activities, we'll get back to this later. He then is ready to start the graph. The three students are logged in and the teacher starts the graph. Here you see there's two different groups because we only have three students. So these guys are seeing the same article, this guy's seeing a different article. They have a little chat interface where they can talk. We have some semantic dashboards that are different for different activities. They now, these guys are in the same group because we switched grouping. They're now brainstorming some ideas, voting up and down. We have some other dashboards up there. They can, you see that these are, are rich activities that are live synchronized. And we now switch to a third interface, which is kind of a visual interface where we, let where we can, as a whole class, coordinate. You know, here we have um, four quadrants. We could also have a background image where we have people uh, move ideas. The teacher wants to talk because maybe it's a live class, so he pauses the class, he restarts it, gets their attention, um, and so on. So this was actually done almost a year ago, and we've come a long way from there. But I still like this video because I don't know what you saw. What I hope you saw is configurable, live, synced, collaborative activities, not just one, but many, a complex social structure, so not just groups, but groups and roles, a flow of data, not just between different groupings, but also between different activity types. And this is fairly rare. Uh, semantically meaningful dashboards, they might not be the prettiest or, or the, the, the most intelligent, but it's the, the structure is there to have intelligent information, whether you are doing a chat, you're doing a quiz, you're doing um, uh, you know, different kinds of activities, you want different data, not just how many people have dropped off. And you see some live orchestration action. So the teacher, not because teachers, I think, are very afraid of losing control. Okay, now they're in front of their laptops. A, I don't know what they're doing. B, they don't want to listen to me. I have to jump in and scream to there to get their attention. Here, you still have control. Um, so let's look at Frog today. So this is Frog. And um, we'll start with activities. So we have here a bunch of different activities. These are all plugins. These are all, um, so the idea here is to build an ecosystem that many people can contribute to. Um, you should, the goal is that if you want to make a collaborative activi learning activity, this should be the fastest way because we're taking all the hard stuff, the logging, the social structure, the logging in, the dashboards, and we're abstracting that. We're letting you work on the actual activity. So what do we have? Well, we could have people write a little software program. Maybe they need to write it in Python or maybe in JavaScript. And of course, we can have some automated tests and we can have the students run those tests while they're changing the code to see if it's working. Um, and we have a dashboard. So we can see as the students are going through um, how they're doing. Um, of course, we have a chat. We, but we also have, um, you know, we can have a robot. Or we can look at how it looks with some messages. Well, it's more fun if we have two students. So let me get, add another student. And that's how it looks with two students. Um, again, we have a dashboard. It's a simple word cloud right now. Um, we have, um, so we have some gener generic kind of content communication kind of activities, right? Um, we also have some very specific activities. Uh, we have, we're well, maybe the le only learning management system or whatever you want to call us, that has an activity for booking train tickets. Okay, this is revolutionary. Now, why would we want that? Okay, this, this look a bit bad at, at, at a short resolution, but here, for example, there's four different interfaces for ordering train tickets. Um, the reason for this is because we were using it in a visual computing class. 
And the teacher, this is 140 people in a large lecture, the teacher wanted them to experience the theories. So we embedded this, and he, every student had to buy three train tickets using all the four interfaces, and then vote on which one they liked the best. And then, of course, we grouped them based on opposite opinions. We grouped them across the classroom, and we had them chat. And now they had to rank and come up with one answer. And we were very curious how this would work, whether students would actually be willing to chat with someone across the classroom. Uh, now, these are computer science students. It might not work with everyone. Um, it was amazing. It was completely quiet, and you just hear all this ticky-tacking, right? Where usually they're sitting there for two hours. You know, um, some of them are actually trading Bitcoin, because I sometimes walk in the back of the room. Uh, some of them are watching videos. They were totally engaged. Um, then, of course, we get statistics about how many errors they're doing, um, you know, and of course how, how much uh, they're changing their opinions. We have a progress dashboard that show us uh, how soon they're finished. And so the idea is not only, so this is a very specialized activity, the next time we'll use it is in one year when that course runs again. But because it's part of Frog, we could put it into a graph that had all of these other communication um, activities. I'll just show you one more and then we'll go. Uh, so we have a quiz, of course. Um, so we could have a statistics quiz. This is from um, a lecture with 300 students where we do statistics and we're trying to use discovery learning to where people have to invent box plot. They've never seen that before, hair or whisker plot. Um, so we have a quiz here, but we can also have rich text and media, right? We can have different kinds of things in the quiz. And then when you're in a large lecture, you really want to know when people are going to finish. 300 people, you need to do a debriefing. And after 10 minutes, you see 70% are done, 30% are not yet done. So do you skip? Do you wait? Are they, are they almost done or have they given up? So we have here, this is data from the visual computing class that I just described. Okay, And the blue line is average progress of the class through an activity. The red line is the percentage of the class that finished. So when the red line reaches 100%, everyone's done. Um, actually, when the blue line reaches 100%, everyone's done too, but they, they tell two different things. So this is the final result, that's fine. But what happens when we actually re do, a, do a little replay, like in sports? All right, so starting, you see that there's the average progress going up, but not a single person has finished. Okay. Now, what are these stippled lines? These are predictions. So we dynamically try to predict um, when people will finish. Now, these are very simple predictions, and you see that they're, they're changing. So, I mean, uh, at a certain point, we get better and better information. But we have a master's student who spent the whole semester now, because we have this data and because we have this interface where he can try out new visualization, new algorithms, we can now keep improving these. And the nice thing is, once he has a good one, it's in frog for everyone to use. It's not just a, a weird research project. So, we have these activities. Um, but individual activities is nothing new, although I think some of these are, are very nice. So the nice thing is when you start connecting them. Um, and to do that, we have operators. So operators, deal, they're kind of like functions. They deal with data. They can either take student data and do something with it. It can send it to different people. It can take data from outside. Right? So let's do an example of that. So I'm going to say I want to get an RSS feed. Let's see, which RSS feed should I choose? How about this one? So now I'm curious, is this going to work? Because I don't want to start my class and I, I, I made a typo and now everyone's sitting there. So I can preview. So some of you might have heard about this. Uh, now this is just the, the thumbnail view. Of course, we can make it bigger. And of course, we can... Why is the Yeah. So, great. Now we know that we can get, um, get data. We can get Twitter feeds. We can get all kinds of things. Um, now let's try to actually run a script. Here's a little bit of a more complex script that I did. What's, what's going on here, I'm not going to go through everything, but these three guys are getting different kinds of content. So let's get some tweets that have uh, hashtag OER. Right? Um, let's get... Uh, have you guys known about Hypothesis?